so is, is there a, is there some kind of deadline in your mind and 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 how important is it this idea of getting immediate residency versus waiting two years and filing a, another set of documents do you think it's do you think it's really um, that big of an issue or is it just a minor do uh, amendment to the the friendly yeah, nations? I think it's, it's really minor amendment it's if you want a permanent residence right now yeah. that I don't think anyone needs a permanent residence like right now. But um, if they need it, I will recommend to, to initiate the process between June and July. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake. I have the good fortune today um, to have Adriana Zelaya on my uh, on Vagabond Awake YouTube channel. And she is going to tell us about the, a couple of things, the Panama Friendly Nations visa. And I'm also going to uh, ask her a little bit about corporate law because a lot of uh, people around the world come to Panama and, and file corporations and, and businesses in order to save on taxes. Welcome to the channel, uh, Adriana. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to have you on here. And uh, this is a complicated subject, but um, I think it's an important one. And uh, my understanding is that the Panama Friendly Nations visa is going through some transformations now. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what it is and how soon they would need to file if they want the, this visa. And then after that, maybe, you know, what's the, what are the new rules going to be? Okay, perfect. Well, uh, Panama Friendly Nations visa is going through some amendments that are going to be valid in August of this year. Okay. So um, they are like two amendments to the law. So it's not that it's going to disappear. No. Okay. The Friendly Nations visa has 50 nations that can right now have a permanent residency here in Panama. Okay. This, the, well, 50 nations that it can be United States, Brazil, Canada, Germany, and others. And um, right now, with the amendment on August, they won't give a permanent residence, okay? The, there will be a temporary residence visa that will be granted for two years. And then you can apply to obtain a permanent residency. So it's not going to be a permanent residency like for the first time you apply as okay. it is right now. I see. You can, you can apply before August and you will get the permanent visa. Oh. So um, what do you need? You can apply for this visa by showing the, the purpose of the residency in Panama. It can be for work reasons, if you have a job already in Panama and you have the work permit or for investment in real estate, okay? Uh, this entails the applicant that it must purchase real estate in Panama for no less than $200,000, okay? okay? And it, okay. it can be financed by a local bank. Okay. So the main change for the main change in this amendment for August is that you won't get a permanent residency right away. You have to wait two years. Okay. And so the, the real estate part of it is that's still true now. That's not changing. The what? There's the real estate part of it, the part where you pay. Yes, you, that's not changing. Okay. Exactly. So it's two hundred thousand now, and it'll be two hundred thousand after in August. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. It is like that. Okay. And um, what are the basic requirements that they? I guess it depends on uh, whether they're coming under work or an investment. Um, what would you say are the minimum requirements if someone is thinking of coming here to retirement? Would you say that's probably the, to buying a piece of real estate? Would that be the easiest way to come under that? Well, um, immigration always needs a criminal history background check. Okay. They need a proof of solvency. You need to have a written statement describing um, the economic or professional activities that you have to conduct as an applicant in Panama. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, the copy of your passport. That are the like the main requirements. Okay. We have another visa in Panama that it's really uh, new. It doesn't even have a, a year because it was the law is from October of last year. Okay. And it's for permanent residency. It's called permanent resident visa as a qualified investor. And the okay. primary requirement is to invest the sum of $500,000. Okay. Okay. And if, if you buy a real estate, then it's $300,000. And this okay. gives you a permanent residency. So it's, it's another option that okay. we have. Okay. Um, and so um, is there anything else about you that you have you want to talk about with the, the um, uh, Panama Friendly Nations visa that you think is important? Or should I move on to uh, the corporate questions? We can, we can move on. Okay. Um, so Panama is famous in the U.S. Uh, maybe famous is the wrong word, but people in movies and, and whatnot, they hear about Panama as a place to go to start a corporation if you want to have a small business of some kind. Maybe you could save on taxes, this sort of thing. Um, and so I, you know, curious about what, you know, what is, what are the requirements to form a, a corporation in Panama and what, what are the tax benefits? Okay, it's really easy to incorporate a, a company in Panama. You just need to have three, uh, three people can form the, the company they can be foreign or Panama citizens. It doesn't matter. They only have to be Panama citizens, citizens if you're going to be in the retail business, okay? okay. If not, they can be foreign. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, a, a great advantage of Panama is that we have a, a taxation system that is territorial. Okay? Generally speaking, only income earned in Panama, from Panamanian sources, um, is subject to tax in Panama, okay? Okay. Companies with commercial activities or, or services provided in or from the Republic of Panama, uh, they don't need to, they are not subject to tax income. So if they have, if they're starting a business, say online, um, and they have income from many different countries and maybe very little or none from Panama, can they form a corporation in Panama? And what, what, what is they the- They can form a corporation and they are exempt of taxes. In Panama. Because the earnings are not from Panamanian source. I see. Yeah, that's a really, really big advantage. Interesting. So the company itself, um, uh, so does that mean that so foreign citizens could form a Panama corporation and they're exempt from Panama taxes, but they still would they still have to pay in their home nations or they, or because the company is receiving uh, the income, it's not on their personal assets. What? How does that work? In other words, exactly because the the company is receiving, it's not part of the of the personal assets is from the company. Wow, so you're, let's see if I understand this. If So three people, they could be, any one of the three could be foreign or Panamanian. There's no requirement for Pan Panamanian. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but um, they could form a corporation and um, they could have an online business that had revenue from citizen, um, citizens around the world that, and, uh, maybe a server, I don't know, in Hong Kong or some other part of the world that actually is where the, where the transactions are occurring. And because the income is coming from around the world, uh, it's, not, it's exempt from Panama taxes because the, um, uh, because the sources of the income are from citizens around the world and they're an, a Panamanian offshore server. Am I, does that make sense? Yes, you can receive the, the funds here in a Panamanian bank account. You can have them here and you can have a, maybe a credit card to use worldwide. Wow, so you could, you could have a, 
somebody with a credit card in some other country and you could have a Panama bank that's uh, processing it. And because they're outside of Panama, that's it's exempt from Panama income. Exactly. exactly. Wow, that's great. That's crazy. And so it would just depend. And, and since, it's a, since it's a Panama entity, the corporation is a Panama entity. Does that mean that the, um, what I'm getting at is at least with respect to the US, a U.S. citizen, their worldwide income is taxed as a, as a citizen of the U.S. But since it's not the business isn't theirs, it's the, it's a company that they own, may own shares in. The revenue is ta is subject to Panama rules, and right, because it's not a U.S. corporation, is that the idea? Well, with the U.S., <laughs> it's another story. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they um, the government is always seen where they are directors or shareholders of foreign companies. Okay, okay. For them to pay the taxes. Okay. So they are like... So the U.S. Oh. Is, is the... They're the exception to that rule. Is that yeah, what I'm hearing? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And so a U.S. citizen... Uh, so you can't hold the shares or have a U.S. citizen as the director, is what I'm hearing. If you're... If, under those circumstances, I exactly yeah okay interesting. Um, so, um, what does it take to start the corporation, and um, uh, like, what are the annual requirements of reporting and fees and that kind of thing? Okay, the um, the annual tax for a company, the yeah. license fee, right. it's three hundred dollars. You have to have a resident agent that's a lawyer or a law firm here in Panama that uh, will cost around $250. Okay. Okay, and that's what you have to pay annually. Okay, so, the, we have an obligation to keep accounting records as well. Okay. But you don't need to file them anywhere. You just need to keep them. So, so in the scenario where the where it's not a, a Panama company doing business in Panama, you're referring to, you don't have to file a tax return, but you have to keep the records to show the income that exactly. was was from foreign sources. Is exactly, that right? it, it can be in zero, but you need to keep the accounting records. Okay, and that, so that was um, three hundred to start and around two fifty for a, a process agent. Is that what I'm? No, uh, if you uh, want to incorporate a company, it can be from $800 to 1,000. Okay. And the annual fees are 300, that, that's the license fee, okay. plus 250 of resident agent. Okay, okay, great. Um, and then um, and that also answers about tax reporting. So is it, only, is it only a Panama business doing business in Panama with Panamanian citizens? that pays Panama taxes? Is that the is that how it works? Exactly. Wow. That's how it works. Okay. Um, and so if someone, I'm not sure that's relative to my audience, they may not even be interested in that, but uh, of, of what the taxes are. So so the, the re, so it sounds like the reasons that the companies from the world form Panama corporations is to save on taxes. Are there other benefits that, the, that they get by being in a Panama corporation? Well, it's most of all taxes. If you want to do business here in Panama, uh, they have a lot of exemptions. For example, for, my, for a micro business, that's a business that has a gross revenue or annual turnover up to $150,000, you can ex be exempt from the payment of income tax if you have a business here in Panama during the first two fiscal years. Oh, okay. And if you're a small enterprise as well, a small in enterprise is one that has turnover up to, um, up to $1 million. Oh, great. And do you have to maintain a physical office in Panama? Um, what is that like? Do you have to have a location with a phone number and a mailing address where you have an employee residing? What, what are the rules about presence? 
if you have a business here in Panama, if you're operating, you yeah. need to. Okay, but if it's just an offshore company, it, you don't have to maintain an address here in Panama. I see, I see. So no address, no employees. Uh, you just need the three people on the documents that might be Panamanian or not. Exactly. And then you need a good to lawyer. To operate outside Panama. Okay, to operate outside Panama. And you need a good lawyer uh, to set it up and to make sure the bookkeeping is done every year. Exactly. Oh, and and what does it cost roughly? Um, I think maybe the fees you were talking about earlier, the eight hundred and the the two two hundred and three hundred. Those are uh, corporate. Those probably go to Panama. What does it cost roughly to have a lawyer take care of all this for you, the first year and maybe after that? And the lawyer fee. Yeah. So again, you're a lawyer. You know how this stuff works. If someone want, if, 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 at the end of the video, we'll give people your email and they can contact you if they're interested in setting up a Panama entity, a uh, corporate entity. Um, what would it cost per year for them to hire you? Well, it depends on the services they will need because every business is different. Okay. So they will have different needs. Okay. And it depends, it depends. But for the resident agent part, it's just 250. Okay, okay. Um, so the, so um, the, the best thing for them to do would be to, to kind of uh, uh, describe how the business will work and then contact you and say, what would it cost to set this up um, as a Panama entity? Is that, is that the idea? Exactly. Yes, because it depends on the business. You know, they are like so many benefits. We have special economic free zones here in Panama. Okay. What, what is and it called? I didn't get that. Special economic zones. Oh, economic zones. Yeah. Exactly. I've, heard, I've heard of that. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, they, they are zones that are exempt of taxes. They have immigration and labor benefits. They have special visas for uh, employees. Okay. They have flexibilities. And um, for example, we have various uh, special economic zones. We have Colon Free Zone that is just kilometers away from Panama Canal. They have zero tax on income from export activities. So if, you, if your business is for export activities, we will recommend Colon Free Zone. We have the City of Knowledge that promotes scientific, uh, academics, human development, cultural activities. Okay. They have benefits for that. Yeah. And, and would most of that relate to, the, to um, running an on onshore Panama business because exactly. they're in economic zones? Okay. Okay, exactly. good. Um, and so all, all of that will be relevant to the kind of business they want to start. Exactly. Um, it's relevant to the kind of business. Okay, so um, so the tax benefits for the business, the corporation itself, uh, in that in that condition where it's an offshore company uh, with no uh, not offering services to Panamanians, or maybe is a way to say it, or uh, um, then the the benefit is low or no income tax is what I'm hearing for the corporation. Um, so if you're a corporate officer of one of these companies. Um, and you pay yourself a salary, um, uh, of course, as an American, you're required to report that on your worldwide income. But if you're not an American, maybe you're from another country, um, do you report that to your home country? Um, and are you taxing it in your home country and Panama? How does that work? Is there a, is there a, a treaty about that that's different in each well, country? We, we have signed a double treaty yeah, we, we have like signed a lot of with a lot of nations. Right. So uh, double tax treaties. So it depends on your nationality. Okay. So that's why I'm telling you that it depends on the business. It depends yeah. on the nationality of the owner of the business. Okay. So we can get the, the correct benefits of each one. Right, right. Okay. So that's all information dependent. Um, well, good. Um, so, um, is there anything else that did you think is relevant um, to this main idea of um, 
someone that's coming to Panama, either they're coming as a retiree or, a, or an investor or um, are interested in the friendly nation visa. Um, any other thoughts you have on that subject that, that uh, might be relevant I'm not asking about? No, just that they need to have um, a lawyer that knows about these topics because as I said, it really depends on you. It's not like a general, yeah. uh, general information that we can give. Right. It, <laughs> it's dependent it's, on the individual. And yeah, their, it's, their really, and, it's really specific. Yeah. And it really, uh, we really have to have all the information. Right. Yes. Uh, that makes sense. As a lawyer, you want to make sure that your client's yeah. taken care of, and that's very information dependent. So, well, good. Um, so, um, and is there, um, is there anything about Panama um, that um, uh, a lot of people around the world come to Panama and retire um, they're in various parts of the country? And um, is it, are they coming, do you think, because of the culture? Are they coming for the tax benefits? What's your overall feeling of why Panama has become a retiree uh, spot in the world? Well, I think that they can they come for the benefits, of course. They come because geographically it's really interesting. We have the Panama Canal. Um, we have here in we we pay in, in dollars, so it's easier for them as well. We have a we have beach, we have mountains, we have a lot of places where where people live. Actually, that's why <laughs> I think that a lot of foreign people are here in Panama. Yeah. And well, we have a lot, a lot of benefits. And the culture as well. We have a lot of foreign people. So um, you have a lot of cultures as well here in Panama. Yeah, yeah. And you also have, you also have uh, some of your cities are at higher elevations where it's cooler. It's not all exactly. Just, it's exactly not all like sea level hot. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Boquete. That's the the really um, really special place for all the people retiring. No, <laughs> it's like the favorite the, place. Yeah, it's one of the favorites. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, great. I, I, um, so is, is there, a, is there some kind of a deadline in your mind, and 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 how important is it this idea of getting immediate residency versus waiting two years and filing a, another set of documents? Do you think it's, do you think it's really um, that big of an issue, or is it just a minor do, uh, amendment to the the friendly? Yeah, nations? I think it's really minor amendment. It's if you want a permanent residence right now, yeah. that I don't think anyone needs permanent residence like right now. But um, if they need it, I would recommend to to initiate the process between June and July, okay. so they can have that benefit right away. Right, right. And it's not that. It's not that bad. The amendment, they will give you a permanent residence, but you have to wait two years. Yeah. So it's just like a waiting period. Yeah, it's a waiting period. It's, it's, it's actually for the investors to use the other visa. That's the new one that I was telling you. I see. Uh -huh, because as soon as they got this new visa, they made an amendment of this law. So basically, it's for them to use this new visa uh, of permanent residence as qualified investor. And, and so that so the the permanent residence as a qualified investor at the five hundred thousand number, does that give per immediate permanent residency? Yes. Oh, so yes. it's almost like they need to make the two hundred thousand dollar real estate investment. Uh, they need to spice it up a little bit to get people to spend a little more. Is that kind of how you exactly. see it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's how I see it. That's how I see it. 
But is the three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in real estate or the investment of five hundred dollars, thousand dollars? Okay, I see. Right, right. So it's a hundred more in real estate or five hundred in some other investment yeah, vehicle. Sorry. So, so it's kind of a lot of hoopla, really, about nothing because whether you get a temporary residence and you um, and you uh, finish it in two years. Um, or you with a two hundred thousand dollar investment, or you, or you do it a five piece of real estate for three hundred and get it immediately. Not many other benefits really. It's just like a two year waiting period. Exactly. That's the only. Oh, interesting. Because a, a lot of people are talking about it online. You think that like the world was ending or something, and it, it doesn't. Oh, sound it, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and and um, the law of friendly nations visa right now. Also, also um, permits uh, an incorporation of a company and a bank account as a requirement. Okay. Not just for employment and for investment of a real estate. You can also have an incorporation and a bank account in Panama to oh, have the. That's benefit. great. So, so you can get. So, if you if somebody were to get on the ball right now. And they were to incorporate with you, and they were to open a bank account. Then that would be a qualifier for a permanent residency visa without the two hundred thousand dollar real estate investment. Exactly. Oh, cool. And you, you, you have to have that that money in the bank. And that might, but in terms of timing, if they don't own any real estate right now, it might be hard to close on a two hundred thousand dollar oh, that's a good question do they have to close on the two hundred thousand dollar deal by the august 1st uh deadline with the application or or can they be an escrow um and then compare that to the business because how quick can you form a business and open a bank account maybe that's easier yeah that, that's easier but you can present if, if you are going for the investments in real estate you can present the promise of purchase Okay. Okay. Or or an escrow. Oh, okay. So, so you just need to put the property in escrow by uh, the end of July or exactly. early August. Okay, good. And you, do you think there's enough time? Should people rush? Call you right away? Email you right away? If well, they're trying to go the those one of those two routes. Yes, you have time. You have okay. time. Okay. Like okay. yesterday, we have we had a client that uh -huh. it's going to to have the permanent residence uh, by by doing this process before august okay um great and um maybe it's just it's worth asking you work for a, a law firm that does um other types of law too right exactly so we it, have so, go ahead yeah well it's called infante perez almillano okay and we have uh, we have other practical areas. We have labor, uh, we have litigation, we have commercial, we have immigration, we have everything in one place. Great, great. So, um, so this is kind of your area, but you have other uh, people in house there at your law firm. Exactly. Yes. That, yes. They do all sorts of other things. If if uh, if an issue comes up for someone. Um, you have the you have the lawyers there that can help with other things too. Exactly, and we have uh, a trust company as well. A trust company. Exactly. So if you need to do the escrow for the real estate, oh, nice. we also can help you. <laughs> oh, I see. Great. Um, okay, great. Well, that's very helpful. So um, I appreciate your time, uh, Adriana, on this call, and I'm sure my this is correct subscribers that have been hearing about the Friendly Nations visa and were worried about the deadline. Uh, now they know two avenues they can take, um, put a property in escrow or, or start a corporation and uh, open a bank account. What's the minimum amount they would need to put in the bank under that plan? At $200,000. Okay, so it's the same amount. It's the same amount, exactly. Okay, all right, good. Everyone, um, this is this is Adriana's email here. She'll take your emails. So I'll put that on the screen so you can see it. And also, if you click the link below the YouTube video, her email will be there too. So don't worry if you if it flashed by too fast. But 
give her, send her an email and she'll answer your questions about these uh, issues. Um, well, thanks so much. Um, appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your busy day to come on and tell my subscribers about the Panama Friendly Nations visa and the corporate uh, opportunities uh, for saving taxes. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks so much. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.